Well, turning to the latest climate change performance index, which has seen Australia ranked last for its climate policy. The annual scorecard compiled by several international environmental organisations was launched at the Global Climate Summit in Glasgow overnight. We're joined from Glasgow by the Climate Program Director for the Australia Institute, Richie Merzian, himself a former Australian Government climate negotiator. Richie, good morning. Good to be with you. So t tell us about this, uh, this survey, this scorecard. What uh, parameters were used? This international ranking looks at a variety of policies that governments are putting forward. It really asks the question, are you doing enough to meet the Paris Agreement and goals? And when it comes to climate policy in particular, Australia was ranked dead last out of the 60 or so countries that were examined. Last year, Australia was second last, only behind Trump's America. And that's the real interesting shift this time around. You've seen America shoot forward, obviously, with the Biden administration bringing forward quite ambitious policies to the table. And you can even feel it here in Glasgow. The administration is here in force. Yesterday, President Obama was here addressing the entire plenary. And you can feel the U.S. put itself on the line to make COP26 a success, much like the U.K. hosts. Unfortunately, Australia is not here. The minister has gone home and Australia hasn't put forward anything more ambitious, which is why it's ranking so low. Hey, Richie, before we go on, I know the, uh, the world is on your shoulder, but your mic is on your collar. So if you might just uh, pull that away, we're getting a bit of, of uh, audio. That's, that's fantastic. So uh, a lot of Australians though, would be surprised to see countries like China ahead of Australia in this ranking. Uh, part of it is really the ability to change and make that change and bring that substance forward. I guess Australia is a wealthy country. It's in the top 10% of emitters. It's the third largest exporter of fossil fuels. And also the, the Prime Minister has actually come here and said that we will meet and beat our targets. In fact, we will do so almost by 10 percentage points. And so the question has to be asked, well, why isn't Australia actually locking that in putting forward a more ambitious target. Because if it's capable of doing more, then why isn't it doing more? A projection can't be banked on if we're going to avoid dangerous climate change. You need to commit to that. And that's what the Australian government's refusing to do. And in so doing is giving cover for China and Russia to also not do more. OK, now we heard before you came on from Matt Keane, the New South Wales Environment Minister. It's the case though, isn't it, Richie, that uh, taken together, the states and territories are being much more ambitious. They're doing much more than the federal government when it comes to putting down targets and, and other measures. It seems like the leadership is coming from state governments and also state coalition governments. You know, New South Wales, South Australia, Tasmania all have ambitious renewable energy policies, have ambitious electric vehicle policies uh, and are looking to seriously reduce their emissions this decade. It would be great to see that kind of leadership come forward from the federal government. And that's hopefully what we'll see over the next few months, at least a commitment to revisit that 2030 target. I mean, Australia has an opportunity to join the US and the UK, it's forever friends in leading for a successful outcome on climate change rather than giving cover to those who want to see us get away with doing very little. OK, before you go, I want to get your reaction to the big news from the government this morning, that $500 million they're putting down to expand the remit of the Clean Energy Finance Corporation to invest uh, to a much greater extent in technologies like carbon capture and storage. A good move in your view? Uh, it's a curious one, Michael. I mean, ultimately, this is half a billion dollars to support fossil fuel technologies like carbon capture and storage in stark contrast to Glasgow, which for the first time ever is addressing fossil fuels and trying to phase them out. The UK is trying to consign call to history, has put billions on the table to help major producers like South Africa, for example, phase out coal. And instead, it seems like the Prime Minister's waited till he was at home before announcing a bit more support for fossil fuel technology, Technology that keeps failing upwards. Our research shows over $4 billion has been committed. There isn't a single clean coal project to show for it. It kind of makes you wonder why that's the additional technology that the government wants to back in rather than doing things like renewables and electric vehicles that we know work and will work now. Richie Mosian from the Australia Institute at the Glasgow Climate Summit. Appreciate your time. Thank you. My pleasure.